Hello everyone and welcome to Calculus. Today we're going to be studying the fundamental theorem of calculus. But to do that I want to take just a little step back and remind you that the first thing that we studied was the indefinite integral. That's the one where we put the plus c on the end. And as a reminder we did that because even though you could figure out what a function was based on its derivative, there's lots of functions that have the exact same derivative. They're all just different heights, hence the name plus, hence the addition of the plus c. But they're all part of a family of functions. Next, we learned about the definite integral and how that's a number, a number that represents the area, the net area between the x-axis and the graph. So if I was going to go from A to B, it would be this area, which is negative, plus this area, which is positive. And that net area would give you the definite integral. Today, we're going to be studying the definite integral as a function of x. And it's called the accumulation function. Now, it sounds a little compli it looks a little more complicated. And I'm going to make it super easy for you. All they did was say, I don't know one of these two values. I don't know one of them, and I'm going to write it as a function of x. So let me just change this to an x. And then they added the f of a to the other side. So now I have a function of x that starts off at some number, the value of a, and then moves from, and now this is where it gets a little tricky. Notice that they switched it from a to x, and then they called this t. Why did they do that? Well, because I want it to be a function of x. And when I do that, this piece right here is actually just a dummy variable. We've talked about that before, how any, no matter what function you were given, whether it had an x or a w or a z, you would always use x on your calculator. That's because you know that that variable doesn't actually matter. But in the end, when you do this definite integral, you're going to get the x in your answer. And that's how you create a function of x. We'll actually do some problems to make it make sense. So don't worry if you don't get it yet, as usual. So let's do an example of each of those. So the first thing that we learned how to do was just your indefinite integral. The integral of negative sine is negative cosine of x plus c. Sorry, positive cosine of x plus c. Then we said, well, now I want to actually find c. So when you're given a certain value, you could plug the 0 in for x, cosine of 0, is equal to f of 0 is 3. Cosine of 0 is 1. So c is equal to 2. And my final answer was f of x is equal to cosine of x plus 2. So we learned how to find c. But now we're going to be given a problem where I want a function of x. I don't want a plus c but you're not going to actually be able to integrate. So what do you do? So you could try to use u substitution, u is equal to x squared, but you can see that you don't have the du. You don't have, it doesn't matter that you don't have the two, you can put that in, but you can't put a variable in. So this isn't going to work. Okay, we're going to do something super tricky. Let me erase that. All right, so I'm going to write down what I do know, I know f of 0. I want a function of x. And I'm going to rewrite this. And I'm just going to use, I'm going to use w. You could use t, but t is not a great variable. Negative sine of w squared dw. That, if I actually did it, would come out to be f of x minus f of 0. And I know that f of 0 is 3. So I can add, this is subtracted right now, so I can add 3 to both sides, and now I get 3 plus the integral 
from 0 to x of negative sine of w squared dw. That is a function with respect to x. That's actually your answer. And you might be thinking, well, you didn't really do anything. You left the integral in there. You never actually figured it out. But the reason that this is considered a valid answer is because if you wanted to find any value of x, let's say 8, you could do it because your calculator is capable of doing a definite integral. Your calculator won't do an indefinite integral. It won't actually figure out that negative sign goes to cosine, but it will plug in numbers for you. And that's why this is considered a valid answer. Let's do another one. This time it specifically says, construct a function of the form, and they want you to use t, so we are gonna do that. So there are going to be people in this class that skip straight to the moving of the f of a over to the other side. And if you can do that, that's great. I try and limit the number of things that my brain has to remember. So I always start with the function, and then I write the things that I know. So I know the three, and I want it to be x. And that would give me f of x minus f of three, just because that's what we've been doing for a long time. Now you do have to change the variable. You can't have an x here and an x there. So I'm gonna change it, and they specifically told you that they want you to use t. So I'm gonna use t dt. And if I were able to integrate this, which I could, I could switch it to sine over cosine and use a logarithmic um, integration, but I don't have to. I know that f of three is equal to five, so I can add five to the other side, and my answer is five plus the integral from three to x of tangent of t dt is equal to f of x. This suits my purposes just fine, because if I want to know any f of a number, let's say pi, I could literally do on my calculator 5 plus the integral from 3 to pi, and it would give me the answer. How would you have had to do this otherwise? If you really wanted to integrate this without using um, this fundamental theorem of calculus, you could have done it. You could have made it sine of x over cosine of x dx. u would be cosine of x, du would be negative sine of x, and then you would have had to add the negative to the problem. That would have given you negative one over u du. I did integrate. So natural log of the absolute value of u, natural log of the absolute value of cosine of x. So it's not that you couldn't have done this particular one actually in getting an answer, but this is a way to get the answer when you can't integrate, like we couldn't for the last one with this sine of w squared. So I'm just giving you another option. So let's go back to one that we can't do, e to the x tangent of x, you're not gonna be able to integrate that, at least not yet, maybe you'll take some higher level math classes. So I'm gonna write it as um, zero, uh, at eight, because that's the one that I know, two x, you're always gonna put the one that you know on the bottom and the x on the top, and then you're gonna write your function, e to the x, tangent of x, dx, oh, but you're always gonna switch it, remember? You can use, well, in this case, they asked you to use t, so I'm gonna use t, tangent of t dt, and if you were doing this integral, you would get f of x minus f of 8. Now it tells you that f of 8 is 0, so I can replace this with a 0. And then because it's 0, I don't have to add it to the other side. I can just go ahead and box that answer. Now I know this doesn't seem like a very useful topic. I cannot even tell you how important this will be if you are in the AP class taking the AP exam. This question will be on the exam at least once, but in a completely different format, which when we start practicing, um, you'll see how they're going to apply it. But pretty much this is what you're looking for. Whenever you have a derivative 
either that you can't do or you only know because of the graph or something like that, but some kind of derivative you can't actually integrate. And one known point, that's when you're going to use fundamental. Okay? Derivative and one known point, that's, where, that's when you're going to use this. So you take your known point and put it on the bottom, put x on the top, you're going to put in your derivative, which you are going to switch, 3 minus cosine of t dt is equal to f of x minus f of negative 3. They told you that f of negative 3 is 4, so I'm going to add 4 to the other side. And like I said, you can skip straight to this step if it makes sense to you. Um, I only like to keep writing it this way first because that just keeps reminding me that that's what integration is. Integration is the upper limit minus the lower limit, and so it works for me. But you should do it the way that makes sense to you. Okay? And that's the, that's the last one. All right. Next section. If f is continuous on a to b then the function capital F of X has a derivative at every point in AB. So that's confusing. Pretty much what it's saying is that derivatives and integration are inverses. And do you remember what happens when we do things to do inverses to each other? If you have a square and you square root it, you end up with X. If you have multiplication and you divide, you end up with x. Whenever you have an inverse function, it puts you back to x. In this case, back to f of x. So if you integrate something, but then you take the derivative, you're going to be almost right back where you started, almost being the key word. So let's do one longhand, and then I'll show you the shortcut. So let's actually integrate it. So I'm going to do this first, and then I'll take the derivative. So when I integrate, I get 2t squared over 2 plus t from 1 to x, which gives me x squared plus x minus 1 squared plus 1. So I get x squared plus x minus 2. But what they want is the derivative of that. So the derivative of x squared plus x minus 2 with respect to x is 2x plus 1. Does that look familiar? It should. It's pretty much what we started with. So if you take a function and you integrate it, but then you take its derivative, you're going to be almost back where you started. And the reason I keep saying is almost is notice you started with a T and ended with an X. The reason for that is the same reason as we put a T in here and an X. We want this to be a function of X. And when you integrate with a definite integral, you're going to end up with an X in the answer. So this integral produces an X. So when you're taking the derivative, you're taking the derivative with respect to X. So how does that apply as a shortcut? in honestly the most awesome of ways. And that is, I see an integral and a derivative, and the answer is just going to be 1 plus 5 to the uh, 1 plus e to the 5x. That's literally the answer. So what happens to the negative 2? Well, think about that. Let's go back up to the one that we did longhand. When we put a 1 in, then, of course, we had the function with the x minus the function with the 1. But a function with a 1 will always produce a number. And when you take the derivative of that number, it's going to go away. So it actually doesn't matter what this number is. If you were to integrate, you would get a number, but then the derivative of that number would be 0. And that's why it doesn't matter what that number is. So if you want to go ahead and do all these... Um, I'm not going to write the answers on the side because I can literally just write the answers. I look at this, and if I integrate and then take the derivative, I get 1 over 1 plus x squared. There is no work to show. That is the answer. If I 
integrate this, but then take the derivative, I'm going to be right back where I started with an x. Aren't these great? I know you want a whole quiz on these, right? Ooh, oh, 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 they put the x on the bottom. Can you do something about that? Yes, you can. You can change it so that the x is on the top by making it negative. Now you do have to put some giant parentheses there, otherwise it'll mean subtraction. But do you remember this rule? So if I wanna reverse these, I'm gonna need a negative there. So 3t sine of t dt. So if I were to take the derivative of this, derivative, I would get negative 3x sine of x. All right, first one that's a little bit different. What makes it different? An x squared. So in order to do this, you are gonna find the derivative, but let's, let's do it long ways so that you can see what happens. So if I integrate cosine, um, I get sine of t, that's the derivative, that's the integral, from 1 to x squared gives me sine of x squared minus sine of 1. And now it says find the derivative. So y is equal to this function. So now the derivative of y is, so what's the derivative of sine of x squared? It's cosine of x squared times 2x, right? If you do the derivative of the inside, and this is still true, that this is just a number. You put a 1 in, it's still a number. It's still going to go to 0. So what made this problem different? You can't just plug in the x squared. It's going to be times the derivative of that upper limit, which, again, do you have to do it the long way? Definitely not. You can still use the shortcut. But you have to remember that if this is anything other than just an x, you're going to have to take the derivative of it. We weren't doing that here before because it was just 1, so it didn't matter before. This is the answer. Okay, last one. I made it harder one more time. So now it has an upper limit and a lower limit. If you want, you can turn the video off and see if you can figure it out on your own. Um, but this isn't one that we can actually integrate, so I can't do it the long way first to show you why this works. But if you think about it, it would be f of b minus f of a, and then you'd be taking the derivative of that. So it's going to be 1 over 2 plus e to the x squared, but when you take the derivative, times 2x. Minus, and since there's a lower limit this time and not just a constant, you're going to have a second part. 1 over 2 plus e to the 2x. But again, because this is something other than just an x, don't forget that derivative. So we have 2x over 2 plus e to the x squared minus 2 over 2 plus e to the 2x. And that's your answer. All right, nice short little lesson. Have a great day.